Hello, I'm Muhammad Abu Ali. I'm a student of uh, master's degree in software engineering and artificial intelligence, and this is my presentation for the, the module research methods and professional developments, and the topic is deep learning model for ECG classification. The first point is to explain what is an ECG and to talk about the importance of 12 leads. So the concept behind the ECG is that when the heart pumps blood through the body, it also uh, creates uh, periodic and regular, regular uh, electrical signs. And ECG, which stands for electrocardiogram, it's actually a visual representation of the electrical activities of the heart. Uh, an, electrogram, an electrocardiogram uh, represents 12 different perspectives called 12 leads, which are 12 different inputs from the human body. Then we can talk about the importance of computing in ECG classification. Uh, the ECG uh, classification and lecture can be complex and time consuming. It requires as well that uh, uh, of, it requires uh, the expertise of uh, well-trained uh, medical staff. Um, since a couple of decades ago, uh, computing, um, programming uh, and software has been an important part of ECG, has been increasing uh, slightly during the last decades, gaining more and more importance in ECG recognition and classification. Uh, there are a lot more models that have been applied to, to ECG recognition and classification. And since the beginnings of martial learning uh, approaches in different topics, for ECG there was as well an, an important uh, presence of, of this kind of artificial intelligence models. Um, deep learning actually has been one of the most important approaches for ECG uh, uh, classification and has uh, achieved uh, an important accuracy in the classification of ECG signals. Um, nowadays there is no, actually we could say that there is no uh, flawless model to, let's say, the definitive model to uh, support interpretation of 12 leads. And the aim of deep learning and the computing in general uh, applied to, to healthcare is to support and increase the capabilities of medical staff and enhance the quality of the support of the medical assistance. Then we're going to discuss some important uh, works that uh, have been done in the recent years related to these topics. We got uh, an article published by Rashburkar in the year 20, 20, 2017. Uh, they introduced a deep learning model called ArrhythmiaNet for classic in 12 lead is a general into different arrhythmia classes. And this model managed to achieve a very high accuracy compared to traditional uh, artificial intelligence approaches. Then Hanun in 2019 presented a, a new article uh, in which an end-to-end -end deep learning model for detecting cardiac arrhythmics using single lead instead of 12 lead that was uh, innovation in the in the field as it. Uh, introduce the, uh, the the option of getting uh, high accuracy in detecting uh, uh, and classifying different ECGs without the requirement of the 12 inputs. Then CINAM in 2020. This uh, article uh, presented a framework called ECGNet uh, for segmenting ECG genials, uh, signals into different phases, the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. These uh, are the actually the, the segments that compose the ECG. ECG is formed of three parts, the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. 
and once these uh, values were able to be segmented they will it was easier for 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 the for the clinical staff to uh, diagnosis in in a, in a better way then we got the different articles published in 2021 by atia et al um, this article was more focused in deep learning algorithms for predicting cardiovascular events based based on ecg monitoring data it wasn't actually a classification method but rather than that it was an, an, an um, a machine learning model that was applied for predicting for prediction uh, the idea was to try to uh, recognize uh, patterns in the ECG that will uh, eventually lead to a cardiovascular risk. And then Ribeiro in 2022 published an article in which the authors proposed a deep learning model uh, for classifying ECGs into different categories. Uh, this model actually was applying basically CNNs and different mechanisms to achieve high accurate classification. The main, uh, the, our research problem, we are going to discuss it uh, in this slide. Uh, so if we look at the main challenge that currently it's uh, presented by uh, models the machine learning models that are trying to uh, classificate ecg is that uh, most of the presented models nowadays require the the input the 12 inputs which are called the 12 leads uh, to provide the uh, high accurate uh, classification Mm, this study will uh, try to apply deep learning models for ECGs that are being obtained with minimal number of leads. Instead of 12 leads, we're going to try to uh, achieve a high accuracy with one lead, two leads, three leads, and we will see. Uh, we will try to get the best approach with the uh, minimal number of leads. It will focus in classifying different types of arrhythmias rather than all the specter of uh, different uh, cardiovascular diseases and these types of arrhythmias that we are going to try to classificate are the arterial fibrillation, the ventricular tachycardia, the supraventricular tachycardia and the brachycardia. We got the uh, three objectives in this uh, research. The first objective is to investigate the state of the art through the study of recent publications and understand uh, where is the point of the uh, research and the investigation in, in the, uh, at this moment in the topic and try to understand what is still required to achieve better results. The second objective is to develop a deep learning model that can provide high accuracy by, by classifying, classifying, classifying different types of arrhythmias and try to achieve it with the minimal number of leads as possible. And the third objective is to assess the effectiveness of the model by uh, testing it and comparing it to different the most recent models that are being uh, presented in the, in the recent years. The methodology of this research is going to be based in five uh, main points. First uh, point will be to uh, state the research and evaluate different data sets. Most of these data sets are provided by Kaggle database. And we will analyze different data sets and try to select the ones that fit best to our requirements. We will study this data set as well in order to process the data, clean it and uh, make it fit our requirements. Uh, the third step will be to design actually the model, including uh, all the requirements for a deep learning model that can uh, 
uh, make us achieve our purpose of uh, classifying ECG. Uh, the first step is to train, validate, and evaluate the model, tuning it, and uh, work on it in order to make it, make it uh, achieve his optimus uh, way of, uh, of, uh, of application. And the last step will be to test the model on ANSYN data to, in order to validate uh, its capabilities and uh, understand how efficient it is. Uh, the project management for this uh, research is structured as followed. It's attempted to have a duration of uh, uh, 11 weeks. Uh, we will spend two weeks in the project conception and literature review to understand the state of art of the topic. Uh, uh, then one week by for selecting and analyzing the different data sets provided by Kaggle. We will spend uh, expect to spend four weeks developing the model, designing, training, design, testing, implementing, and tuning. This is a process that will take around four weeks because it's going to be a circular process and we, we design, train, test, evaluate tune and we redesign again and we start again till we get a uh, proper model. Then we will spend two or three weeks uh, writing the report and making establishing all what we have been doing during our work in a proper document and we will spend one or two weeks preparing the presentation. Then we can discuss the ethical considerations in ECG classification with uh, machine learning models, particularly with any kind of computing, uh, computerized mo mo approach. Uh, there are five important points. The first one is uh, the one related to the data privacy and security. It's important to make sure that the data it's, uh, respects the individual privacy of the of the patients that are provided that data. Make sure that there is a VS fairness, and uh, this is to make sure that uh, the data is equilibrated and it provides outcomes that are suitable for different demographic groups. Uh, interpretability and accountability, it's, uh, it's aimed to enhance model transparency and accountability to promote trust and uh, the ability to rectify, to rectify errors or biases uh, in a transparent way with now hidden, hidden uh, approaches or processes. Uh, informed consent autonomy. If any kind of uh, of uh, ECG or uh, patient data is collected without the 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 we cannot be collected without the clear consent of the patient. That's a basic uh, point. And clinical validation and safety. Any model that can be produced in uh, research or during this kind of research it must be obviously validated by clinical and medical staff that can understand the real implications in the real world. And our expected result is that to uh, achieve superior accuracy in distinguishing the different uh, arrhythmia types and uh, achieve this accuracy with the minimum number of leads required and uh, apply all this process by implementing all the ethical restrictions needed to guarantee uh, the best ethical approaches.